Hi, today we're going to take apart our dyno mule engine. One of the things we do here at Real Street is we test products for manufacturers. So this particular engine has been through uh, 2JZ cam test, it's been through a lot of different turbo testing, it's been through a lot of different fuel testing. So it's been run at power levels from 800 wheel to over 1400 wheel and it's been detonated on purpose to gather data against uh, NOx sensitivity with different fuels. So it's, it's lived a pretty hard life and eventually it's picked up a noise. So we're going to take the engine apart, see what's failed and see what we can do to make it better. So now that we have the engine spread out on the bench, it's clear that we have a great example of a good engine that saw enough bad days that it became a bad engine. So we have a failed rod bearing, we have damage to the piston pin bushings, we have damage to the piston pins, we have damage to the piston pin bore, we have micro welding on the main cap, and we have damage to the crankshaft connecting rod journal. When I say that we had a good engine that saw enough bad days that it became a bad engine, these problems didn't just happen overnight. They didn't happen in one pull. This engine was run uh, from 2016 to its death at the end of 2019 um, with reasonable tuning and good fuel. So this engine had made as high as 1400 horsepower uh, when it was in my car and turned 87, 8800 RPM. And then when it moved into another car to become nothing but a dyno mule and do camshaft testing and turbo testing, it was run, you know, around a thousand runs, around a thousand horsepower. And when we got through with our turbo testing, we basically wanted to see, well, how will it die? So I had put some fuel through it uh, during fuel testing that was questionable and we were able to produce some detonation and detonation is uh, both a slow killer and an aggressive killer. So there's signs of knock and signs of knock damage throughout these parts. So let's take a look and see how detonation kills these components. So the number four rod bearing is all but completely destroyed. You can see that it's squeezed out wide. It's crushed so it's narrow. So effectively when you go to put it back on the crank, it, it doesn't fall back on the crank because it's, it's buckled in on itself. This is just a completely destroyed rod bearing. As an illustration, here's what it looked like when it started. So you can move into some other rod bearings. This one has a really nice mark on it from where the ignition timing was happening. So at this point, you have enough cylinder pressure and this turns into that. So if you had to look at it in stages, you would say bad, worse, totally failed. And when you look at this little patch on the connecting rod bearing that's kind of discolored or highly polished, the oil is being displaced and that's being wiped. So that's, that's basically how the bearing is going to fail and that's from excessive cylinder pressure, um, poor oil quality. And when I say poor oil quality, I mean this is a factory oil pump. So when you run a factory oil pump with a low volume of oil, so you only have you know, less than six quarts of oil in this engine, you run it over and over and over and over again. The oil gets uh, aerated and while you can still maintain pressure on the gauge, what's being pumped through the engine is not the best quality stuff. So that's going to create that damage. So on the crankshaft, the discoloration on the journal, you can see 
this rod journal will have to be resized, so all the rod journals will be resized. The crankshaft is not actually bent, um, so it'll be serviced and put back into another engine. Uh, the rod that the bearing failed on, you have this discoloration, and this discoloration is not going to go away. This rod should be thrown away. Anytime you create um, discoloration on a connecting rod, I would not use that rod again. You can see that the pin bushing has been squeezed out of the small end of the connecting rod. Again, you have you know a few thousand psi of pressure in the cylinder under normal operation. When you detonate the engine, that number goes 8, 10, 12,000 psi. So it's pushing down on that and it basically displaces the bushing over time. So we also have some bent piston pins and we're going to roll these. This piston pin looks just fine. It's DLC coated. It's nice. It doesn't look like it's got any abnormal wear. This coating is so good that basically it'll, it'll hide what you'd have for witness marks on an uncoated pin. But when you look at the piston itself, you can see that the pin bore is um, messed up on the outsides where the pin is flexing, the piston is flexing, and it's displacing the oil and galling the piston. On the caps, you have some vibration where the, the cap is actually walking around or vibrating on the block, and that's causing this fretting or micro welding. So if you look at a cap that wasn't vibrating versus was vibrating, you have, um, if you feel it, there's little pieces of the block that are actually now welded to this cap. And you can, this cap can be serviced, it just gets surfaced and the block will get realigned board. But that's that vibration um, at RPM with detonation. Um, the piston itself, when you look at the piston itself, the top side where you guys are used to seeing or the, the rings, like all that's intact. When we first put this engine in the car, we were going to stop around 1,000 horsepower. Um, but at the time, I had an 8385 on my car and it just kind of happened. So I was running these pistons harder than what this forging should have been run at. And you can see it in, again, in the pin bores because the piston will flex with power. But when you look at the, the ring, it's really intact. There's no budding. Um, the ring lands aren't stuffed or stuck. So all that's good. But the part itself uh, was being overused. So we, we, we need to go into a stronger forging for this type of work. For those of you that don't do this work every day, it may be easy to spread your failed engine out on a bench, look at the rod bearing and say, there's the culprit. That's why my engine failed. The fact of the matter is that's just a clue. And without looking at the rest of the system, you may misdiagnose your failure and possibly experience the same failure again. So when people reach out to me with a failed part, they often want to hear that that part is bad and that they've found the, the problem with their engine. Well, what I'll ask for is more clues. So I want to see pictures of the rest of the engine. I want to see the ECU log, the ECU calibration, and then I can start to formulate a good path to put them on to where they won't have the same failure again. So if you have a failed engine or a failed part and you're having trouble properly diagnosing it, feel free to reach out and we'll do our best to help you get back on track.